Hello everyone, it's Mary Beth, and today I'm going to walk you through my pro tips for getting started with Materio. We've made this system incredibly simple and incredibly organized, but I just want to show you some of my tips to getting started the right way. So let's dive in. The first thing you want to do is to familiarize yourself with the dashboard and where things are laid out in the system. You're going to land on your dashboard under your active projects. There is a sample project here. That is for you to play around with, add things to, manipulate. It is a sandbox for you to play in. Please go into that sample project and familiarize yourself with what it might look like to have a project in Materio. The second thing I want to call out is the time tracker. This is going to be across the app. Uh, whether on your dashboard or on projects, it's gonna be at the top here and you can come in and track your time. It's so important to know your numbers, even if you're not billing your clients. So be sure that you are tracking your time as you go through the system, especially when you start your first project and you're beginning to estimate and outline. Now, when starting a new project, there are definitely some pro tips that I would give. The first is create what I call a simple address. So you don't have to put in the full address in this project name. You might want to call it the, you know, the child residence or the child addition. And then you might put what I call the simple address. And then you're going to hit next. The other thing you want to do is go ahead and put in the full address when it asks you for it. This is the proper place for it. This comes into play when you are ordering and getting things delivered to the house. Now you also want to make sure that you set a budget. I know budgets can be tough and sometimes you don't want to kind of spell those out, but your client has something in mind. So go ahead and put that in so that you can have a guideline as you're estimating the project. Now this part is very important. As you're getting started to really test out Materio and see its capabilities, it's important to invite the right people to your company's organization. So at this moment, this is where you can easily invite your team members and you want to make sure that they are in the system and ready to go. If you need to add more, you can always click add more and it will give you more space to fill out emails. Now I'm going to hit done and this is going to invite my teammates to create an account. Right. The next thing you want to do is make sure that when you are starting a project, you upload a floor plan or a mood board so that you have a visual to work off of. This is going to make outlining the project easy, and this is where you're really going to see the magic of Materio. Now, the next pro tip is that when you upload plans or mood boards, you want to make sure that you are naming them and, if necessary, stacking them. So I can come down to the bottom here and I can rename this. We'll call it Main Floor. And this is really helpful when you have a lot of pages and you want to make sure that your team and your clients understand what they're looking at. And so when you've got lots of construction documentation or a lot of mood boards, this is really helpful. Just to note that you can also create a stack, which is like a folder of items. You can create a stack of kitchen renderings or things like that, and you can name that stack whatever is appropriate. So use those to your advantage for keeping things organized and all of the most recent versions here. Now the next pro tip is to use our scope starter. So I'm going to click start outline and what this is going to do is allow me to look at my floor plan or my visual as I'm getting started. Now we have some defaults here. You want to make sure that you are using those defaults if those rooms do exist in your project because that's going to help you pick the selections later down the line because we're going to give you some options. Of course you can always add in custom rooms. I'm going to set the budget. This is definitely optional, but it is uh, liked by a lot of our designers because you can set a budget for each room and that will just help you as you're going through the project to know where you're at. When setting up the project, we're going to give you some templates here like general requirements. If you're design build, you might be doing plans and permits, temporary utilities, etc. And then if you're a designer, you're going to be looking at things like the FF and E, the electrical, plumbing fixtures, and all of these little chips here. These are selections or items that you'll be able to estimate and add products to. So use the scope starter to your advantage and use these defaults as a place to get started. Next pro tip is to be sure that you set up your locations and rename them as necessary from the beginning. So we're going to use our defaults. You can come in and customize these. And then also if you have other custom locations that you would like to add, come in and add those here. When getting started with a material project, I just want you to know a few basic things that are going to help you go faster. Number one is that you can add any type of item. You just click add and then you can type in whatever you want. If this item needs to be a selection, meaning you're going to add product, you'll just hover over, click the menu and enable selection. This will allow it to show up in your design workspace and allow you to put a product on it. The pro tip I have is that you can click the zero here without going into the item details and you can put in an estimated cost 
cost per unit. Now this is floor tile, so what I'm going to do is click the quantity. Again, you don't have to go into the item details. I can mark the plans. And the first time I use the area tool, you're going to want to set the scale for your project. So I'm gonna come in and set the scale for this project. You're gonna drag. If you have inches, you're gonna use decimals. So just do a little math there and you will add that in. And then I'm gonna save as a default. If I do that, I can come in and I can create area, polygon, and linear items across this floor plan. And Material is going to do the takeoffs for me. So I'm gonna highlight this and you'll see calculates the square feet and do my waist. All right, those are my tips for getting started. I know it can be a lot, but we've made this system super easy for you. I'm excited for you to explore the vast capabilities of Materio and to learn how to organize those large scale projects and get all of those decisions out of your head and into the system. If you have any questions as you're getting started, we are here for it. You can live chat us from the app or you can email us at hello at Now it's time to level up.